Okay, hi. Hello everybody. Today I'm going to make some meatloaf. How are you all doing with your um, isolation? Yesterday I thought I'd give you all a treat, so while I had a day off I thought I'd colour my hair purple, but it didn't really take very well, so I have like a lilac hue at the front there. Not that anybody would probably notice unless I pointed it out. So I hope you're all keeping yourself occupied and not bored to death. And maybe a bit of cooking is going to help you today. So, meatloaf. What you would normally have for meatloaf is half a kilo or a pound of minced beef and half a kilo or a pound of sausage meat. Well, I didn't have any minced beef in the freezer. I rooted and rooted. All I had was a packet of minced lamb. So I'm going to use that today. And I didn't have any sausage meat, so I've just used a regular packet of sausages. And you get your sausage, split it down like that, and the skin just comes off easily. So there's my sausages. I forgot to get the spoon. So just give them a bit of a I'm going to warn you now, you're going to get your hands in this, so you need nice, clean hands. So my sausages have now turned into a piece of sausage meat. And you want some stuffing mix. Now, if you've got an intolerance to gluten, you could use um, a couple of slices of gluten-free bread, mix them through in the processor so you've got bread crumbs, and maybe pop a few herbs in there, some sage, some parsley, some chives. But I'm gonna use a little bit, well, half a packet of sage and onion stuff in mix. The cheap one from Elvis. So one. In this cup, I've got one of these stock cubes in some boiling water just to melt it down. About that much water. Boiling water. And I'm going to pull that in. with the stuffing mix. If you're making regular stuffing with stuffing mix, you would need more than that liquid in there. And then I'm gonna pop in the mince. Give it all a little stir around. Just roughly at the minute because I'm going to work that with my hand in a minute. Right, I've got a brown onion and I've chopped it here. And I'm just going to show you an easy way of chopping an onion. Right, that end there is this bit. Try and keep this bit on, it keeps it all together. And then you want to make slices like that making sure your fingers are out the way and then chop down that way. I'm not going to go right to the end because I'm going to save those two end bits there, look. It's nicely chopped. Um, to make my gravy because I'm going to have this with mashed potato and cabbage and carrots. You can have it with salad cold, or you could have it with baked beans. You could have it with anything you like, really. But I fancy a nice gravy dinner today with mashed potato. Right, 
we've got one egg this is really delicious this imagine all those flavors you've got the onion you've got the stuffing you've got the mint you've got the sausage And then you've got some easy, easy things. You've got some tomato ketchup. I'll give it a good squirt. Normally I'll put brown sauce in there as well, but I haven't got any brown sauce in. So I thought I'd have a little go with some sweet chilli sauce. You won't need any salt because there's plenty of salt in the stock cube. But some black pepper would be nice. in here and give it a good squish so you get it all mixed in together all the mints and the sausage meat the onions or the sauces and that stuffing mix all together if you're a garlic fan you could put a bit of garlic in there if you want some veggies in, you could grate a bit of carrot in here. A bit of swede. Maybe a bit of parsnip, but that would make it a bit sweet. Anyway, that's all mixed nicely now, look. And I'm going to pop it. See why I've done it like this. And fold that piece up there. And that piece like that. I'm going to fold this over. There. Now, 
what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna pop it in the oven and it will take between an hour and a half and two hours on about 180. That's my five or six. Um, if you've got a probe, not everybody has them, but some people do, you wanna make sure that your center is nice and hot. And I like to have it at about 90. And that means that it's properly cooked through. It doesn't have to be as high as 90, 85. But I like 90 just to be on the safe side. So now I'm going to pop that in the oven and leave it to cook. Okay. And I'm going to 